Hi everyone, this evening we're going to be learning how to dye silk scarves using my instant dye method. Hi everyone, wait, that's not Erica, what's going on? Well, this is Dave uh, with Nomad's instant, uh, Instagram Live tonight. Um, today I'm going to be doing something very cool. So, um, we uh, do a lot of our own hand dyes, we encourage you to try out some of our techniques. So we're going to be doing something really cool tonight. Um, we, um, I'm the main dyer here at Nomad Yarns, I do most of the yarn dyeing. Uh, Erica is our designer um, and um, tends to do a lot of the social media so you don't see me a lot, but I'm here in the background dyeing stuff. Um, today I'm going to be showing you a really cool technique. Uh, we have in the past done our cup of yarn um, kits, which look a little bit like this. Our uh, cup of yarn instant dye kits. Well, we have a new one that we're releasing. It's called the Cup of Scarf Instant Dye Kit. Um, and today I wanted to show you how we're going to be dyeing uh, our, um, a silk scarf using an instant dyeing method. So, um, let's get to it. So, uh, this evening I have laid out in front of me all the, all the materials I need. Um, these all come in our instant dye kit. Um, and I'm just going to go through them now, let you know kind of how this works. And then I'll get on and do the dyeing. It's going to be super, super fast. And all I'll need is hot water, which I have here in this uh, flask. I have nearly boiling water in here. Um, so that will be ready to go. So, first thing we have um, is an insulated soup cup. Uh, these are the ones you get uh, for restaurants to do um, to take out uh, soup in. So it's going to stay fairly cool to the touch, which is nice. Um, and then we need a scarf, so I have these, these are great, um, they're about five foot long uh, silk crepe shawls, they've got a nice little fringe to them which is really cool. Um, these are going to be our dye base, um, so right now it's white, it's just a pure silk, just take it straight out of the packet, these are pre-treated ready to go. And then we're going to need some dyes, now we're using acid dyes today. Acid dyes sound scary, but all you need is either citric acid or vinegar to set them. Um, normally you have to do a soaking process and you have to do all these kind of things yourself, measure stuff out. Um, I've made that easier by my little capsules. So, we pre-mix citric acid powder and acid dyes in these capsules. And these are a soluble gelatin capsule ready to go. So, this dye is pre-mixed, exactly the mix that I would use in my dye studio. Um, when you don't have to do anything else, they're really easy to handle. I do recommend wearing gloves when we're using them, um, which are going to be when I actually get to wrapping up the dyes. I have these in four colours. It's going to be a, um, a full kind of dye scheme today. So I've got a, a yellow ochre, a pumpkin orange, a fiery orange, and a chestnut. Um, so I'm going to be adding those capsules in. Um, and then the hot water is going to dissolve the gel caps, activate the acid, set the dye, um, and then we just leave it for a few minutes. Um, and I will show you properly kind of how those come out at the end. I have one in a different colorway. It takes a little while to dye, so I'm not going to make you kind of sit here and watch that. Um, but this is the kind of effect we're going to get, and I'm going to show you um, as we layer in the dyes how this effect is achieved. So let's have some fun. Let's do some dyeing. Um, first thing you need to do is glove up. So it was pick some gloves, these are, depends on what I can get hold of right now. Um, these gloves are still a little bit tough to, to find sometimes. So these are, always make sure they're latex free. Um, whenever I'm teaching, whenever I'm working with other people, I don't have a latex problem, but always latex free in our kits. These are like the ones you get in delis. Um, these dyes are not going to be really harmful to you in small doses. They're not great for you in the long term. They do um, stain your hands. My hands have always got stains in them somehow because Somehow I managed to get uh, dye within my gloves, but I'm all gloved up, ready to go. Um, I'm going to set my dyes aside. Now I have these trays to work on just because um, these are what I have in my dye studio already. Just need a flat surface to work this on is all. Um, so I'm going to grab this. So I'm going to take my silk scarf, I'm going to lay it out fairly flat in front of me. Um, and then all I'm going to do is start adding my dye capsules. So I'm going to make basically a great big log. Um, with my dies and my scarf, um, just laying the dies down, rolling up, and that's going to give me an interesting ripple pattern when I go to um, actually add the hot water to set it. So I'm going to start with my lightest colour. Um, no reason other than um, mainly I, I I just feel like it. Honestly, um, these are going to go in. I'm not even going to go for a repeating pattern. 
just going to go for whatever I feel like. So this is yellow ochre, so I'm going to add one capsule um, here on my uh, piece. Then I'm going to kind of fold my scarf over it, give it a little bit of a roll. Then I'm going to move about an inch up on my scarf. Now because the scarf is so thin and because there's enough dye in there, the water is going to penetrate through everything. I'm not going to do, I'm going to do my darkest colour on it yet because I feel like it again. Um, the dye is going to penetrate through everything anyway, so it doesn't really matter um, exactly where you put these, they're going to go through multiple layers. Um, but I like to um, kind of place them in, in a fairly semi-uniform fashion. I'm going to add one of these um, bright oranges now. Again, just roll on up, a couple of rolls around. Um, and with these kits, um, this is my last colour. And now I'm just going to add them in randomly. Um, doing a similar thing, so I'm going to um, kind of go from top to bottom um, adding those colours in so I'm going to get an interesting ripple effect uh, where the concentration of the dye is going to go down as you get further away from the capsule. Um, so I'm just going to go with the brown again uh, just because I feel like it. There's four of each capsule here that's kind of the maximum you need to do this. Um, I like to um, always go with the most concentrated dyes that I can for this kind of thing because I love bright colours but if you want them to be kind of pastel -y, um or not go as often then you don't have to use all the capsules if you pick up a kit like this. Um, so I'm just adding and keeping rolling um, and you don't have to add them. The great thing about this is you're doing a piece of art so it doesn't have to be at all um, organised. Um, which is good because sometimes I don't feel like being organised especially when I'm doing a fun video with you all. So. Um, I'm just still adding these in and rolling and this is really all there is to the dyeing process and you'll see um, in the finished scarf I'll show you um, how the placement of the dyes kind of makes a difference to where they fall. Um, so the last one I kind of placed them in different concentrations um, to give more of a kind of display of how far apart you could put them. This one I'm going to do a bit more evenly. Uh, so I'm coming towards the end now, I've got four capsules left and about a quarter of my scarf so I've spaced them out pretty evenly all the way along. Um, I'm kind of forgetting where I'm putting them as I go because I'm talking and rolling and doing so many things at the same time. But you know what? It's fun. Dying is fun. That's what we're here to do. Um, if I was trying to repeat something like this in the studio um, to make lots the same, I would be measuring um, exactly where I was putting things a lot more, making sure to follow an exact procedure. But that's not what I'll be doing today. Okay. We are all rolled up, so I'm left with a scarf sausage. So the fringe is going to go around there as well. I'm also going to fold this in half to make it easier to fit in my uh, cup here. And I've got my insulated soup cup. You'll notice the thing that was holding my dies is the lid. Uh, look how efficient I am. Okay, so I'm going to take my insulated soup cup, stick my scarf inside. And it's all white. Nice and pure, boring white. Okay, now's the fun part. So I've got my boiling water here. Um, now this should be hot enough to dissolve the gel capsules. Um, so I'm going to pour this all in one go. Going to add this straight to my dyes here. And watch the fun. So that's about, um, it's about a pint, a cup to a pint of boiling water. Um, I have, in the kits we provide some uh, some poking sticks, um, but I'm used to poking hot things all the time. Don't do that at home. Um, so you can see already, if I hold this closer to the camera, you can see here how the colours are starting to pop open um, in this cup here. So now's the fun part, we just get to watch um, we're going to watch this for a couple of minutes, you can see those capsules starting to pop and then um, very slowly just start to give it a shimmy and a shake. Um, we're going to twirl this around, give it a twirl, give it a shake um, and those colours are slowly going to dissolve and bleed into the white scarf. And you might find you need to take your poking sticker, in this case my gloved hand, again, spend all day dealing with hot things, um, to submerge your scarf a little bit more. 
and just swirl it again. There's some, going to be some air trapped in there. Okay, and once you've got it mostly, the colours are mostly starting to burst open, then you can get, be a little bit more um, enthusiastic, giving it a real good swirl. Um, and you can see how those colours now, very, very quickly, those colours have um, completely coated that scarf now. Um, so you can see those those bubbles have burst and filled this container with the background orange. So those colours are going to blend together. The colours that we pick for these scarf kits um, are all designed to be analogous colours. Um, so those are colours close to each other on the colour wheel and will not kind of desaturate or muddy um, as you add the colours to. So that is what that's going to look like and we're going to let this set now. I'm not going to make you uh, sit and watch it. Uh, we're going to let this set now for about 10 minutes or so. Um, for the really hot water, and this is just warm to the touch, so even my hands that are used to hot things um, are not needed. Um, so we're just going to let this set now for about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, you don't want to let it cool down too much because those capsules are gelatin. Um, so they will start to kind of reset if it gets too cold. Um, so I let it set to let the acid and the heat do its work. That's what's going to set the dye in there. And then we're going to take that out. We're going to just put it in a sink. And then I use a little bit of just hand soap or dish soap to rinse out um, the last of the dye. It tends to be a good idea to wear gloves while you're doing that. And that really helps clear the rest of it off. And then you can hang this up and it's just going to be done in just a few minutes is all. Uh, it's really, really super fast. Um, and then, yeah, just dry it out. Um, they, these scarves, because they're so thin, will dry out in about an hour. Um, so you're going to be able to wear this scarf basically later the same day um, we've had people I've uh, taught silk scarf dyeing classes before and I've actually had my students leave wearing the scarves, they're slightly damp um, but they leave wearing their scarves um, so super quick I'm going to take my gloves off and save those for later um, and now I'm going to show you on my scarf here um, exactly what we did um, and how that kind of turns out so this scarf was done exactly the same method just a different colorway um, so here we had yellow ochre pumpkin, fiery orange, and chestnut. Uh, this one I used a Kelly Green, a Bright Aqua, a Turquoise, and a, a Brilliant Blue. And it was done exactly the same method, rolling up. I spaced the capsules a little bit closer at the start, a little bit further out towards the end. And you can see, as those capsules pop, and show you the colour, you can see how it produces these wonderful ripple bursts of colour that flow into each other. You can see how they're getting further and further apart here. And then this end section I wanted to leave with basically no capsules directly touching it. So you can see how those colours kind of blend and mottle as you get towards the end. This makes a really good example piece, but it also makes a really interesting effect as well. As it fades from the darkest, um, kind of most dye concentrations, through them getting further apart, um, through this final section here where those dyes have kind of fully penetrated through and just almost been in the colour bath that has some colour variation into it. So that is all there is to instant acid dyeing. Um, so this is exactly the same method if you wanted to do a dye hand painting um, or if you wanted to do dyeing in some other way with acid dyes. All you need is uh, vinegar and citric acid and hot water and that's it. Um, if you are dyeing something larger than a single skein of yarn or um, if you're dyeing several scarves, you need to have a fairly high um, acid ratio or um, heat for longer. These have been set up to basically we use a lot of acid to really push that um, chemical reaction to go faster in these instant dyeing kits. So I use a lot less acid in my dye studio. Um, but that is basically the very basics of instant acid dyeing. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's uh, real fun to put these kits together. Um, if you are local to us, uh, do check them out this weekend. We'll have them for the first time at Bloomington Handmade Market um, in Bloomington, Indiana on Kirkwood Avenue from 10 till 4, um, June 12th. So if you're watching us on Instagram Live um, and in the local area, come and see them there. We'll have them on our website soon as well. Um, we hope you have a fantastic week. Erica will be back at the, the normal time next week uh, to do our technique week. But if you've had fun uh, doing the dye tutorial, let us know in the comments. Uh, do send me any questions that you have. Um, if you want to see more dye tutorials, um, 
let me know and I will do one for you. Um, well, I've got lots of different diet techniques I can show you. Everything from more instant dyeing to stuff we do in the studio um, and then showing you the, uh, the effects of different dyeing techniques that we do. So thanks very much for watching. Have a fantastic week.